Welcome to Creativity in Focus, a live podcast where every week we highlight an artist and its art. And today we have a very special duo here with us. But before we get started, I want to remind you of a few things. They're really important to us. If you want this podcast to keep existing, I need your help. And how can you do that? You are either watching on Facebook, on YouTube, on Creativity in Focus, or maybe in one podcast directory. If you can, right at the beginning of the video, share the video and give us a like, some hearts, any, anything that they, they put like, uh, as an icon, do that right now because it impacts a lot the way the video is, sh is shown, especially if you're watching on Facebook. The first two minutes of the video are crucial to us. So believe me, you're going to get a lot of content, a lot of good information, no selling at all. So you are safe to share this video right now. That really impacts how we show out there and helps us keep doing what we are doing. And because this is live, this is a very interactive podcast. So we expect you to interact with us. Of course, we want to know where you are in the world right now. Uh, what kind of sculpting are you interested? Maybe what type of medium do you use to sculpt if you're a sculptor? And of course, the questions that you might have for these amazing people that I'm going to introduce. How do you do that? Well, depending on where you're watching, the chat is either below the video or beside the video. Right, so look for that there. We have people moderating that, so every time you send a question to our, uh, to our guests right here, we are going to ask them. And this is super fun because then we can, uh, you know, really c cater this to you more than anything else. We don't want this to be a traditional interview. We want you to participate and make this interview with us. So it's really important that you post what you think on, on the chat. So that, for example, what I'm going to do right now is exactly the same that I'm asking you. Uh, I'm going to check who is here on my chat, if I have my Facebook video going on, and then we are going to get started and I'll introduce my guests. And I'm going to take a second to share this as well. Okay, so I can see already we have Noemi Smith, which you know, guys, is also an amazing, um, uh, sculptor, Treehouse Crafts, and everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Okay, so now let me introduce my guests. They are amazing sculptors. I actually think that there is only one word to define these two guys, is badass sculptors, because it's amazing what they do. Brandon and Jared Shiflet, welcome. Thank you so much. We're so happy to be here. Yeah, oh, sure I'm, are. I'm We're... so happy for you to, to have you both here. Yes, ma'am. First of all, tell us a little bit about you guys. Well, we're from a, a small town called Beaumont, Texas. And um, when we grew up, we grew up loving comic books. A lot of the people who do what we do um, grew up loving. Uh, they were inspired by these movies, Aliens and Predator and these other special effects heavy movies. Um, and Jared and I love those movies as well. But we were really more motivated um, being comic book fans at a young age when we were 15, 16, 17 years old. And so we started sculpting on our own in, in a, at a young age. And we uh, started showing our stuff. This is pre-internet. This is before the internet. We would show our stuff at conventions, at comic book conventions. And we were lucky enough really to get discovered and uh, jumped into it as a career. Yeah, we thought we were going to draw the X Men. I think that's you what know, we wanted to do. Delusions of grandeur, and then we we weren't we weren't good enough. Yeah, we realized we arts. couldn't draw. <laughs> that was and, one. Or we could just barely draw enough for it to be frustrating. Right. And uh, I think there was some. We were trying to make some role playing games where uh, it might have involved Andre the Giant or some weird games, and then we. We were trying to set up notebook paper and tape and stuff, mm -hmm. and we just so we were trying we were trying to create these characters in three D kind of, but at first with paper in different ways because this this sort of cold cast porcelain statue industry that we're in now it didn't so much exist back then, mm -hmm. and then we found clay and 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 uh, we were on our way. Yes, sell you clay. We we messed with sell you clay, and then. Uh, the dreaded white sculpey that you hear about sometimes, that stuff is like bread dough and very difficult. Very sticky. And uh, then a uh, sculptor named Gabriel Marquez turned us on to Super Sculpey, the pink Sculpey, and of course that's what most people work in. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I want to show to people that if there is anybody out there that still don't know the Shift Clip Brothers, let's show <laughs> a few of the, the pieces that you have created. And you can comment on those pieces when you made them, what was the inspiration, okay? So let's see the first one. Can you see it? And if you're seeing too small, you just need to click on the small icon that you have there so you can see it bigger. You don't see it? Okay, so it's some type of warrior, very buff warrior. Yeah, has some type of crown, crown on his head. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Okay. So yeah, you can you can see that. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And so you mix it together, and, and when, when, once you get it mixed together, it starts hardening. And you have what, Jerry? Two you have about two to three hours. At the end of three hours, it's very dense. You could still press a tool into it, but just barely. Wow. And then by the time of like four or five hours, it's completely cured. Mm -hmm. But that first about an hour, it's what I would call sculpy like with a very similar to sculpy. Mm -hmm. Cool. When you first mix it, it's very soft. And so people mix it up at first, and then they think, how the heck can you work in this? Because it's so soft. But then it slowly starts to uh, yeah. firm up. We consider it kind of advanced because the, the, the texture and the solidity is, is kind of changing the whole time. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't feel the same 20 minutes in as it does an hour and 20 minutes in. It's a different consistency. Is this the, but, your preferred medium to sculpt in? We, we like Aves for, especially for things that need to be one of a kind or we, that we think need to be very durable. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also love Super Sculpey. Uh, okay. I, I like to use me, Super Sculpey Medium Blend. And uh, we both do. And Jared likes the firm. I like the firm. Firm yeah. a little more. But I, I'll work in either. But, you know, everybody, it's, everybody's doing something different. So right. uh, we like the Medium Blend, the firm, but also the Aves on occasion. The Aves is, uh, you can sand it real fine. There's lots uh -huh. of doggies around. So. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this, this warrior piece is like, um, at the first part of our careers was we were doing more licensed work for the, these companies, for Marvel Comics and, and these companies who had these licenses from Marvel license or video game work. The second half of our careers, we were always working on our original designs, but the second half of our careers has has focused more on our original work. And so that's what that warrior is. It's our own it's our own piece and we make up these pieces as we go. We sort of we don't sketch out a lot of stuff uh, before we start the sculpture. We just sort of kind of bend the armature and start sculpting and then we see what comes out of it. So right now we are seeing one that it looks it's I think it's the piece you actually have behind you. It has some wings with nails. Yeah? Okay. Show them. Okay. Yeah. So this is, again, this is a, an original piece, another one-of-a-kind piece. It's in progress. It's not finished. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to make, we're going to reproduce this piece, probably in bronze and as well as in resin and maybe porcelain. But uh, this is a, a, just a touch bigger than we normally go. But this, too, is Aves epoxy skull. Okay. Cool. Now... Tell me one thing, uh, you guys, I, I know the dynamic because my business is also me and my daughter, uh, and you, you are, the, you, are you always sculpting together? What is the process of working as brothers? Yeah, it goes back and forth. Sometimes he'll start it, sometimes I'll start it. Uh, way early on, this, we combined our comic book collections, and somehow that was like the start of this, us working together. And um, so it's not weird for us. Ever since early on, we would, uh, you know, start a character, get tired of it. I might give it to him, and he would go, what if, you know, we do this or we do that or we put wings on it or we turn its head to the left. Uh -huh. And so over time, you just realize that two minds are, a lot of times it's better than one. You know, we'll mm -hmm. both whittle a piece down That's right. and we start trusting each other's uh you know, uh, opinions 
Mm-hmm. And, e- and even when we're not both touching it, we're art directing each other yes. constantly, you know, to, to mold the piece. Uh-huh. And, and uh, we have very similar aesthetics because we all, we, him and I grew up reading the same books, mm-hmm. uh, loving the same sort of fantasy illustrators mm-hmm. and, and watching the same movie. So, so the end result, Jared and I have a very, the very, we have the same eye for things. We like things to look a certain way. And we have a very similar aesthetic, so it works out. A lot of people say, oh, my gosh, how do you work with your sibling, you know, like they hate each other or something. But I, 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 I a lot, too. Yeah. yeah. But it's but I, artistic, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, 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 always tell, I always tell people, I'm so, I'm so much of a better sculptor than he is. I just have to make allowances for it, and then we're, we're fine. Everybody understands. I understand that. Uh, here I have Noemi Smith uh, asking, are you, uh, you both self-taught artists or did you go to some training? We're, we're completely self-taught. Okay. We yes, are man. self-taught. Uh, I didn't even make it out of high school. I had to kick rocks out of high school, and I was, man. I couldn't I, do it. I was going to college for journalism before oh. we realized we could really do this. Uh-huh. And like I mentioned earlier, we our sort of teaching was, was were these um, illustrators and fantasy artists from the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, mm-hmm. like Frank Frazetta and um, Jeffrey Catherine Jones and, and these comic book artists like Bill Sienkiewicz. And, and we, we, we took in all these guys, these, the, the kind of dynamism they had, the kind of anatomy, the kind of... Uh, these cool ideas that they had, and we tried to transfer that into 3D, uh, of course, uh, imbuing it with our own style, hopefully. But it's also just about trial and error, and you you know this. I mean, it's just getting in there and doing it. You know, maybe you use the wrong glue, and then you go, oh, that was the wrong glue, you know, and just getting in there and attempting it, uh, getting your hands moving and doing something. Like repetition? uh, Yeah, yeah. And repetition and uh, something we always say is reference. Yeah. You know, if you are have stuff to look at, if you're working on a lion, have multiple pictures of a lion. Um, and yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joyce Eamons is saying, I knew it. Doggy peeps. Love you guys. Uh, yes. <laughs> we have lots of rescues. Yeah. Yes, oh, there. good. I love that. Uh, yes, Marie there. Miles. Uh, hello, Shiftley Brothers. Debbie, wow, oh, they have crazy sculpting skills. <laughs> just seeing the tip of the iceberg here. Uh, Linda Clay, watch. Uh, Linda Clay is watching with you from West Michigan. Okay, and then I have a, a question here from Michelle Collins. How did you learn accurate anatomy then? So, yeah, I think we studied. For, for our stuff, which in the beginning was mostly superheroes, and as you see, these kind of barbarians. So we studied um, bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Lots reference. of, so much bodybuilding. You know, a great reference for male anatomy is the uh, Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Huh. And it's cool because it's, uh, it's big dudes, but they're not so big yet that it's freaky. It's the era where you can still like make sense of the anatomy. Oh, there's the triceps and there's the trapezius and there's the deltoid or whatever. Uh, the guys today are so freaky huge that uh, it's hard to understand what's going on with the anatomy. Mm-hmm. Because but, it's so exaggerated. Yeah. It's too much. Right it's, we, and this is like, like I said, it was before the internet. So we had to actually get these physical books and magazines and we would cut up all these magazines and have sort of the arm from every angle possible, you know, a photo of it right on a, on a piece of, taped onto a piece of cardboard right in front of us. So it was sort of in our line of sight, in our vision while we were working. And we still do that. It, we, we still, still will get a big piece of cardboard and tape up like 20 reference shots. Mm. Uh, if it's somebody with their arm going up, you know, that pose at multiple angles and you can just take so many things but back to the original question, it's mm-hmm. just repetition and just doing it over and over, mm-hmm. just doing it over and over. Uh, with, with anatomy, uh, one, one other trick we always like to use is to find reference um, that hasn't been photoshopped very much or airbrushed, because it's a big deal. Like um, I think 
for for women, I would look at Playboys and stuff. But Playboys have been sort of airbrushed so much. Right. I, then I realized I started getting like runners magazines, like mm -hmm. in shape and stuff, where you can see the these little really. striated. Yeah. That's right. You can see these 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 women aren't huge women, but at the same time, you can see the striations. You can see these little uh, these little divots out of the arm here. You can see uh, little lumps and bumps that you can't see in a sort of more glamour photography. CrossFit is a good, yeah. I find cross, the CrossFit, the CrossFit girls so have a good heroic, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Yeah, I agree Definitely. with you. And especially if you're thinking about superheroes, right? And, and comic mm -hmm. figures, female That's comic right. figures. That's right, yes ma'am. Uh, Beverly is saying, I find that artists are the best problem solvers. Uh, I, I actually have an instructor here at Curious Mondo that she's a glass artist, and she says, I am a problem solver. I just happen to have chosen glass as the way to solve my problems. Do you agree right. with that? Yeah. Because I that's love what that. you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, guys, so you started sculpting with paper and, and you were into comics. Tell me how that became a profession then. We the conventions. Go ahead. Yeah. We. we we, 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 we took our stuff to comic book conventions, and the one that really mattered for us was the San Diego Comic Convention, which mm -hmm. is the biggest sort of comic convention in, in America. Yeah. And this was uh, in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And when we took our stuff out there and put it in the art show, right, and so it was all one-of-a-kind pieces on a table. <coughs> Excuse me. And we got um, noticed pretty quickly. And, really? and people, we put out little business cards, you know, and people started calling us for work. Right. And... We were lucky with some of the people who saw it, important people who saw it at the right time Definitely. where they needed us to work on cool projects that got notoriety. And so being in the right place at the right time is always part of it. Uh, How long ago but, was but, that? Yeah, that was our first year at Comic-Con was 91. 91. Uh, we're old. We're super old. <laughs> but what I'll say is that uh, <laughs> some of the smaller conventions, the Dallas Fantasy Fairs, the Houston Comic Conventions, that prepared us, right? I would say for Comic Con. Mm -hmm. um, so you had been into a few before you invested into going to Comic. -Con. That's right. Okay. That's right. Now, we we find that you know, by our natures, we're sort of um, private people. <laughs> we're not like um, showboat, showoffy people, so that. When we first sculpted, we just wanted to keep our work in our house, uh -huh. you know, and I think like our parents would tell us, hey, you know, nobody's going to come and knock on the door and say, yeah. do you have any cool sculptures for us to look at? You know, you, yeah. at some point you have to get that stuff out into the world for people to see. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, of course, that's a lot easier with the Internet. But back and, and then, the, the quickest route for us was these comic conventions to get it in I, front of people's eyeballs. Yeah. And I think that happens to a lot of artists, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, the other day, I was looking at your group, which we're going to, to talk about in a second, but there was this guy saying, so I got all my sculptures and I went to a, a show, nothing sold, and, sh and he was really sad about that. Uh, right. Did you ever face something like that in your career or not? Absolutely. Okay. For sure. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that still happens. <laughs> it still happens. That, all these shows are different. It very much depends on the crowd, the, the type of crowd the specific show is drawing. And so nowadays, we're tr very much, we try to go to these sort of art-centric shows that are kind of art-minded for, mm -hmm. for art-minded people and um, sculpture-minded people in particular. Mm -hmm. And that really, that really worked out well for us. Conventions have changed a lot. Um, yes. But I still try to tell people, go to art shows. I mean, at conventions, set your pieces up in the art show, in the artist alley, get a booth, because that is the crucible kind of, uh, yeah. steel sharpens steel, and your friends and your mom is going to tell you, hey, it looks great, but yeah. then when you set your stuff up and you're standing there and people don't know it's you, that's when you hear the real, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, and it can hurt, and that has happened yeah. to us over and over, and that improves stuff. I mean, oh, I remember totally having a Superman that had real buggy eyes and people were making fun of it. <laughs> well, it really hurt. It hurt my heart. But then I didn't, I'd set the eyes in deeper the next time. Mm -hmm. And so yep. you learn from that. Yeah, if you don't sell anything, I, we still think the sort of feedback you get and the networking at some of these things can be invaluable. 
You know, I, I think you learn every time. We, we just participated on a show that was totally wrong for us. It was one of those Halloween shows. And, but you know, at, at the end, you also understand the behavior of the people that were in that show, uh, where you failed, uh, what are, maybe, maybe if it was a known buying group, nothing could overcome the fact that you didn't sell, but a lot of things you can improve on your side as well. So I think there's right. always a good That's side right. on that. I wanna show three yeah. more pictures. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to, to describe them to you so we, you can talk about it. Sure. So let's see. Okay, so this guy, well, it also has some type of wings. This, I cannot describe what this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> is it bronze? Uh, it's a kind of bronze, yes. That may be our character, Old Scratch. Could be. He yeah. has something coming out of the head. Like some, also some, I don't know. They're all weird looking, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are weird looking. It's all a bunch of demons, horrible <laughs> stuff. And they all have wings and axes. Yeah, so it's, it's true. It's, this is not an axe. He, he's it's, it's some kind of magical stuff that has nails. Right. Okay, let's see one more. The, the, the audience is seeing. I just wanted you yes. to comment. Okay, this guy is, uh, he's on the side here, has some type of horns. Is yes. the older guy? Yes. Do, do you know which one I'm talking about? It could be the high demon, maybe. Does he have a pipe? Uh, I don't know. He doesn't have a pipe. Well. There are, he's wearing some type of helmet that has either horns or something like an octopus. And he's holding oh. something. Very buff guy. Okay. Oh, that's a... Uh, yeah, so, it's all so, weird. So, <laughs> yeah. But I can speak that a lot of this stuff, it's... Um, as I said, we, it all fits into a, a lot of our original stuff fits into a little world for us. Mm -hmm. These characters in a world, maybe they could all meet up one day. Yeah, and some of them be fun. barbarians, and some of them are more monstrous. And we even do some more like a science fiction women sometimes. Okay. Um, but it's uh, it, we're just riffing. We're always we, we it's like trial and error. Like we will put horns on a guy and say, "Does this look good?" And Gerald say, "No, no horns." And then we'll stick wings on. Does this look good? <laughs> we're, we're literally making it up as we he go. He goes from you know, warrior to fairy in a second like this. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it's like, does he need forearms? Yeah. And so we're, we're sketching it out in clay, and then we're revising ourselves. We're, sometimes we're revising the whole entire idea of the piece in clay in real time as we're working on it. Because I actually also like to sculpt and see where it goes. Uh, but I yes, see a lot of people that love to do a lot of sketches before, and I don't draw. So that's always an issue because I keep thinking, can I be good if I, I'm not doing all these sketches beforehand? Right. But I think you did pretty well. I have some questions here. Michelle Collins, what is your opinion uh, on fan art versus license art? Well, we love fan art. We, we still, even though we've worked for companies like Marvel, we still do fan art. Mm -hmm. which is essentially like a one-of-a-kind Hulk, Incredible Hulk sculpture. Yes. We still do that all the time. Oh. Just, we don't make copies of stuff yeah, without you, a it's license. It's hard. You can't make copies and then sell that stuff. Uh -huh. But as far as one-of-a-kind fan art, we love that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, we'll do like a one-of-a-kind Wolverine or something. Mm -hmm. We like. We Not only do we like to do it, we like to see it. We like to see other people's interpretations of these characters and such. Mm -hmm. um, but now, a lot of garage kits is unlicensed. That's right. just what garage kits are. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. a whole little industry. And right. uh, it's a lot of times it's some of the best stuff because you don't really have so many people giving you revisions and stuff. So some of the time, sometimes you see some of the most pure, unwatered down stuff as in garage it's kits. just one guy's vision yeah, yeah whereas when jared and i work for a big company you may have five six seven guys having input into the piece there are a lot of cooks in that kitchen mm -hmm. uh everybody has a say from the legal department to the pr department for the comics continuity and stuff like that right. so yeah when you're doing these garage kits it's much more just uh free wheeling stuff I, I i find garage kits awesome since i was very young uh Joe Will is asking, uh, will you do SDCC this year? Um, we will not be. That's San Diego Comic-Con, mm -hmm. and we're not going to be there this year, unfortunately. 
We, yeah. we did about 24, 25 years of Comic-Con, and we haven't gone the last couple of years. We might return. You never know. The show is so much fun. Yeah, it's it so fun. much fun. You, you, yeah, they still have, you mentioned, it takes a big uh, commitment. Yeah, I know. Uh, you mentioned uh, a little while ago that the, uh, the shows and conventions, they changed a lot. Um, are you talking about audience that has decreased or, or what type of change? I'd say the audiences have increased, increased. yes. Okay. But there's a change where it's, um, it's more uh, family-oriented. It's not like... When we first started going to Comic-Con, it was a bunch of grizzly nerds <laughs> that loved the X-Men right. and loved Silver Age comics. And today, it's more of a Disney World atmosphere right. um, where you're bringing the whole family. And that's great. And cosplaying, mm -hmm. which is yeah. awesome. We love that. Yeah. But it's a different kind of crowd. Yes, and totally different. So for, uh, for us, with 3D stuff, Mm -hmm. with sculptural work, which I assume a lot of the people watching uh, do, we have to kind of pick and choose which shows we think people are going to have an interest in our stuff, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, our kind of work. Joe Mena is saying, the old group started my career. These boys helped me get started as a professional. And you're still doing that because we are going to talk about your group, but it's amazing what he does. Mike Porter is saying that the first image that we show was old scratch, and the second was a Viking warrior. Yes, oh, ma'am. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because the yes. sculptors they need to know what's showing That's here. That's right. With that, with the old scratch, okay. uh -huh. some of our pieces we, we sculpt them all in the same medium. Like that old scratch was super sculpting, but then we produce them in resin or sometimes porcelain and as well as bronze. Mm -hmm. And you know, you may know the, the the bronze process is way more complicated than resin casting. Than resin casting, we have a a foundry down in. Bass Strip, Texas. They're called Deep in the Heart Art Foundry. And uh, they do amazing work with us. And so we, we give them the original, and then they take it from there, and they do all the molding and the casting. And then we, 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 help, we, we work with them on the patina, which is the coloration mm -hmm. and the base. We have, we have a bronze here. And does the, the original survive the process? <clears throat> no, it often oftentimes doesn't. Oftentimes it doesn't. No, it doesn't, right? But what we'll do is Ooh. we'll send them a uh, Resin copy. We'll send them a resin copy instead uh -huh. of uh, the cool. original piece. Mm -hmm. So this is called Tallulah and the Stray. It's a little little girl and a dragon. That's and we cool. kind of want it. I'm not sure if I'm here. We go. It, it's showing you well. Yes. So we wanted it to be kind of ambiguous which one is Tallulah and which one is the Stray. <laughs> you know, like leave that for people to decide uh -huh. who's taking care of whom. That's but so um. Cool. So that's the kind of piece that we're doing in, in different, uh, we're having it cast in different uh, materials mm -hmm. to sell. And they do a great base on this where it's like uh, Gorgeous. granite and walnut. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, we try to keep the patinas really dark. Yeah. Right. If it's the personality. Sandra is asking, <coughs> how many shows do you normally do per year? An amazing work. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We, we at, at our peak, we cut back. We've yeah. cut back. At our peak, we were doing about three shows a year, sometimes mm -hmm. maybe four. But now we only do one or two um, mm -hmm. because we are trying to spend more time sculpting. These shows take us some energy to, to ramp up to them, to plan for them, mm -hmm. to ship all of our stuff out there, mm -hmm. whether it's in L.A. or wherever it is. So... We've cut back a little bit, but man, we love going to shows, though, because mm -hmm. some of these shows, our next show is a Monster Palooza in Los Angeles, and it's in April, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of great sculptors. That's what fires me and my brother up, is seeing these other great yes. sculptors. Yes. Uh, we see their stuff, and we're like, oh, man, we need to get back to the studio, because okay. we need to <laughs> catch up with these guys, yeah. or girls. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so that gets us, that gets us uh, inspired and motivated. So since you touch on the subject, when you see the sculptors in the places that you go, female, mm -hmm. male, what's the percentage there? I would say the, the amount of female sculptors is growing. Uh -huh. um, okay. Some of our favorite sculptors these days are female. We look at the work of Miss Monster, uh, Miss Monster, whose name's Mel Melita Curfee. Mm -hmm. There's Forrest Rogers, who does these beautiful 
um, incredibly elegant pieces, sort of with a fantasy uh, bent to them. Uh, Virginie Ropars is a French uh, sculptor who does kind of doll stuff, just mm -hmm. but just gorgeous. And so I think more and more younger girls are getting into it and following these some of these incredible women's uh, lead. I was mm -hmm. just looking at some amazing stuff by Amelia Rowcroft, a oh, yeah. British sculptor. Yeah, I guess she does some stuff for Madame Tussauds or whatever. She, and she's on our show. She's on our forum. Yes, she is. And you have people from Spain that I've seen with some work that is amazing, too. Now, yeah. I want to touch on something. So you told me you were, you were going to shows, you were selling your pieces, and, and Brandon, you said, and some opportunities showed. So tell mm -hmm. us, because I know even in your forum, you have a lot of beginners, right? What type of opportunities are there for somebody that is sculpting? Well, just doing what you love, really. That's, <laughs> that's uh, you know, if you want to see a Spock, just staying up late one night and making a Spock. You know, that's business-wise. Yeah, business-wise. Well, uh, I think those opportunities have changed since we started. Yes. Yeah, and for sure. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there, in, in our industry, there are toys. There is a statue industry that is huge where you have companies like Sideshow Collectibles or Coco Bukea who are making these giant porcelain or they used to be porcelain. They're actually polystone resin Yeah, statues. they're polystone now. Um, uh, these giant intricate statues. Now, it should be said a lot of this stuff is digital. You know, is yeah. is is ZBrush and the light uh, digital programs, and that's cool too. That's not what me and Jared do, but it's mm -hmm. still cool. We have a lot of those people on our forum who do do that and are really good at it. But the sculptures are everywhere. Like again, when we went in Comic Con in '91, there was like three or maybe four booths that had sculptures in them. One of them was Randy Bowen, and we made a beeline to that booth because he was like doing all the uh, garage kits and the early Dark Horse oh, yeah. stuff. But there was only a couple of booths, and now every booth has a little sculpture, something to yes. show their, what their designs are. So... Uh, one I of the, think there's a lot of opportunities. One of the ways in our sort of genre comic books and, and that stuff, science fiction and fantasy, sometimes these uh, independent comic books will need a maquette or a sculpture yeah. to show people. Mm -hmm. Like it draws attention at a convention. They may need this sculpted because they're not sculptors. Sometimes just to take to a meeting. Exactly. Say, hey, this is there are pitch right meetings yeah. Yeah. where yeah. Some, sometimes people have scripts and they want to show you the character in three dimensions. Yeah, it helps. And... Uh, Jared and I do some of some of that as well. Mm -hmm. And there's when we started out, we were doing physical sculptures in video that, that were used in video games. Mm -hmm. Now they don't really do that anymore. All of this stuff has gone digital now. Yeah, yeah. But we we, we did physical sculptures in video games for toys, for uh, for statues, for maquettes, for resin kits, for bronzes, and um, for us, we've taught some as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so. The way business wise, we don't really make all of our money from one specific revenue. It's nice. from many different revenues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and so you never know what's going to what's going to happen. You know, with, with with sculpting, you never know what the next call could be. But right. it, mm -hmm. it can pertain to so many different things. We get emails and you know, just out of the blue with projects. You know, uh -huh. that are, that excite us, and it's kind of awesome. It is awesome. Uh, Barbara Feltz, love your forum and all the awesome sculpts people uh, share. Very inspiring. So tell me a little bit about this forum. Why did you start, what did you start it and how long has it been going? I've been there, so, I would say, two years that I've been there. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. Yeah. Tell so me we used bit. to have a forum that was not on Facebook. It was, it was one of these old style forums where you had to upload your photos. And, mm -hmm. and, and mine and Jared's idea was that we wanted pros and amateurs, rank beginners to these badass professional sculptors, all to mix and mingle, show their work, give critiques, talk shop, talk about the industry, mm -hmm. uh, and have a place to meet up and show people what you're doing and talk about it. And that's what Joe Minow was referring to a little bit ago. Yeah, group, he said yeah. the old form. Yeah. So yeah. on the old bulletin board forums, 
uh, it was a little crazier because people didn't have to use their real names. Oh, <laughs> so right. it's just human nature for people to be crazy. Uh, but then um, I, I think when when we were young, we we asked, we called a pro and asked him how he did a certain thing, how he was mixing his play. Because we, when we were starting out, we screwed up in every way you can screw up. You know, mm -hmm. we were using the wrong wires for armature. We were using the wrong clay. We were using the wrong everything. Mm -hmm. And this pro told us, he said, I'm not going to tell you that because you might take my job. Mm -hmm. And Jared and I really didn't, <laughs> we weren't crazy about that answer. So we, we weren't feeling it. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we weren't feeling that. And we decided, well, we're going to share everything. Mm -hmm. However good our stuff is or isn't. We're going to be totally transparent about our process the entire time. And that was sort of the impetus for starting the forum, where it's like, here's how we do it. Here's what we're using. If you have the talent, hey, let us see it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we get excited when we see a young kid who we think might be better than us. Mm -hmm. You know, it, started, it really fires us up. It started from us being very angry and bitter. <laughs> That's right. Trying to reach out to other bitter. sculptors. And like, and, hey, let's talk shop and let's be friends. And they were like, <laughs> so we were like, well, whatever happens, uh -huh. let's not do that. Let's, let's not be those guys. When people ask us questions, let's just say, it's this kind of wire. It's this kind of glue. It's this kind of clay. And what, what does it matter? You know, yeah. good luck. Yeah, I totally agree with you that I, I don't believe in this, oh, let's protect the information. First, because right. we live in, a, in an era that that's not possible. But right. even if you do, the, mag the magic is here in your fingers. That's what, that's and, what we're thinking. And that people cannot copy, period, right? So the process in itself, uh, it's okay, you can tell. I, I really, I agree with you. It makes me mad when you try to talk to somebody that you, you really think it's my peep, it's, it's either in the same right. industry ahead of me or not, but it's there. Yeah. And there is all this protective secret, you know, very secrets of, of everything. Right. It's like, hey, come on. You know, when you touch I'm, is when the magic will or not will happen. That's right. I, I always, you know, I can teach a young kid my process, like how to lay the bricks, but I can't teach him to be great at it. Yes, you know, exactly. He's either going to be great or he's going to be good or he's going to not be great or he's going to be freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. All that is, is inside of him. You know, I can't, I can't help him with that part. Mm -hmm. And that's the long, lonely nights. You're either willing to sit there night after night working on it. You can't make people do that. That's, that's, that's right. some intrinsic thing inside that I'm going to keep working on this tiger uh, all week if I have to, until it looks like what I want it to look like. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's amazing how some people are dedicated. Uh, Christian Pauta is saying, hello, master. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not masters. No. We're, we're, we're just trying to get a little bit better each day, just like he yeah. is. I promise you. Yeah. You know, what I, what I like a lot about groups like yours, and, and you know, there are many groups out there. It doesn't mean that they all have the same value that you, yours do, is that I, I, for one, when I grew up, information was limited. There was no internet, right? Uh, you would have to have books or teachers or something in order to, so the process was really complicated. Today, is, it's the opposite. We have too much information. We have too much access to everything, which only confuses the mind. So it's important when we find a place where actually people are looking for the same thing because then the information in itself is filtered and you pick what serves you more than anything. And I think your, yes. your group does that. Now, what's Thank ahead you. for you guys as sculptors? So we're getting ready for Monster Palooza. That's the big Yeah, thing. we're ramping big up for our show in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which is in April. And... We've got a couple of pieces coming out uh, in bronze that we're excited about. And we've got some ideas for pieces that we haven't started yet that we're excited about, mm -hmm. that we're really excited about. Um, we've got some projects going that are, that are kind of uh, non-disclosure stuff that we're kind of happy about. Right. And uh, we've got some commissions going. So we've got a full play. We've got more projects than we can work on right now. That's good. That, that's what everybody yes, wants. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tell me, tell me one more thing, because everybody always asks about pricing, and I know it's different depending on the medium and where you are in your mm -hmm. career. But give give us some ideas on your process to price something. It's very difficult because for us, there's an element of 
however good we are, and, and I'm not saying we're that great, but over 20 or 25 years, we've developed a name, I think, a certain reputation. So when we price things, I think sometimes that name has something to do with it. So it's hard for me to always advise like a beginner, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I will say that a lot of times for fans, we put stuff, we'll put one of a kind stuff up on eBay and we'll start it at zero. Mm -hmm. And just let the we start people all just our eBay determine. stuff at zero. Yeah, and that's a roll of the dice. Wow. <laughs> sometimes it really it is. And sometimes it doesn't. It really is. But it's kind of like a thank you to the fans who've, uh, you know, hung with us all these years and still still like our stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we've made every price. Yeah. All the, you know, the first thing we sold uh, was for $200 and we spent six months oh, on one it. of a kind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was huge. <laughs> right. And we were having like mental breakdowns on it. Wanted to quit. That's right. And, and it, it was $200 and it was for like <laughs> six months work. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you're unknown and you're living in Beaumont and you've never sculpted anything and no one's ever heard of you, that's what you do. That's I good. mean, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, we didn't know any better. Um, mm -hmm. And now our pricing is different, obviously, but, but, yeah, he's right. We've sold things for every price, right. you know, I mean, along the scale. <laughs> and we did a lot of, even before the comic book conventions, we did a lot of arts and craft shows where we were just trying to sell any little thing. And so we've sold everything from 50 cents to, you know, $8 and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And that's part of it. And uh, it, it was part of creating awareness for what you were doing at right. the time, right? We have That's a video right. to show before we finish. Yes, ma'am. And tell me a little bit about this video, and we can. So, I, this may be the piece that we showed in on the camera, which is the Tallulah and the Stray bronze. It's probably a better better video of it. Uh, it's on display at Monster Palooza last year, mm -hmm. uh, our show in LA, and you can just see a little bit of the turnaround, so that you get some of the light bouncing off of it. Uh, like I said, it's a little girl and a dragon, and that's a gorgeous uh, piece. Thank you very much. It's it's about the wingspan is about 15 inches, 16 inches, I want to say. It's not a huge piece, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but people really respond to that piece. I think because of the the uh, the girl the and the two, two characters being involved in it, the little kid and the dragon. Um, it, people really responded to it, so mm -hmm. we're, we're really happy with the reaction. And anytime you can use something to denote the size of the dragon, that helps. Because yeah. you go, oh, this is a little dragon. Oh, this is a huge dragon. So that kind of scale study where mm -hmm. you're like, okay, well, I know how small a little girl is. Right. So that means this dragon, dragon is huge. Wow. Just a little trick. Yeah. That's so cool. I know you guys are very busy and, of course, very creative. How do you keep your creativity in focus? Coffee. <laughs> like Diet Coke for me. <laughs> just a lot of coffee. Uh, um, we, we, you know, we get inspired by a good comic book, a good movie. And, and I get inspired by the work of our, our peers a lot. You know, there are these books, uh, Spectrum, the best in contemporary fantastic art. It comes out every year. Mm -hmm. When I'm not feeling inspired or super creative, I flip through this book spectrum that's all this great fantasy art in both sculptural and as well as in 2d paintings and drawings and i see what these other people are doing out there it fires me up. i can't help but yeah. be to do yeah. to do our stuff it really does yeah mm -hmm. that's great we have one more question here what's the biggest piece you have sculpted so the biggest piece we've sculpted was uh in the last couple of years for a private client, and it was a, what, our interpretation of a chupacabra, mm -hmm. which is a cryptozoological animal, and it, the tip of the wings was about five and a half feet tall. Wow. And this was for, ended up in bronze, and it was it's an outdoor installation on, on private property in West Texas, and this is by far the biggest thing we've ever sculpted. We didn't, we're so big, we didn't even know we could do it. Because we're not used to doing sort of life-size or monumental type uh, size stuff. But it came out pretty decently. Pretty we, were, we were really happy with it. Did you know that the origin of the chupacabra is actually in Brazil, where I'm from? There you, you go. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Very popular yes. there. 
and, and we are showing sure? I wish, the, I, wish the got, I wish you could have gotten a picture of one so we could have had more reference for it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michelle is saying, Michelle Collins, thank you for paying it forward. It's great inspiration to me to hear you were once in the same situation as me just starting. Actually, well, guys, that's how I would like to, to end this interview with you. Uh, what advice do you have for people who are starting out? Because you've been on this road, I don't know, just the Comic Con was 1993, so for a while right. now. What about yes, those that are starting today? What's the best advice you can give? Work on what you're into. If you're into uh, cars, make cars. If you're into uh, sports figures, or yeah, if you want to sculpt Emmett Smith from the Cowboys, that's what go with your gut because the long nights and the dedication that it requires to uh, keep getting better, that is a huge part of it. If you want to make a dragon, if you want to make a unicorn, go with that initial, don't sculpt what you think the masses are going to want and work to the lowest common denominator. He's so right. That's it's, like a red herring. Go with what you think. Sculpt what you love because at some point it's not, the career may not be working or things may be going wrong, but you're still loving what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, Jared, and it's a roller coaster. And, and any career is a any, roller coaster. Any career is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but Jared and I love the, the subject matter we're working on, and we have a great passion for it. And that's what keeps us going, like you said, in, in, late in those nights. Yeah, and there are long nights, right, if you want to get that's, anywhere. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> right. It's hard. Being an artist is hard. It's yeah. not the easy way out. It's the hard road. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, you don't sleep much. That, that for yeah. sure. If people want to get to know more about your art, uh, where can they go? So, I, uh, absolutely. Our website is shifletbrothers.com it's all spelled out brothers it's s-h-i-f is in frank l-e-t-t brothers.com that's our website uh as we talked about earlier we would encourage people if they are sculptors or they're trying to be sculptors to check out our forum uh it's called the shiflet brothers sculpting forum on facebook and on twitter we are at shiflet bros and Instagram, we're at Shiflet Bros. And everybody's welcome, whether you're just getting started and you don't know what an armature is, or you're, a if you're top of the line. That's right. Working at Madame Tussauds or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you're more than welcome to come in and talk shop with us. Yeah. That that synergy in that group just makes everybody better. And that's a great yes, thing, you know, that we Thank have. You. Thank you. Yeah, we have you guys there as mentors every, uh, all the time. I remember the first time one of you comment on something I made. I think for three days I was doing the happy dance. <laughs> so thank you. That's awesome. Really thank you. Well, well thank, you thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. This was oh, really this. Was my pleasure. Yeah. It has been awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you guys so much for participating, asking your questions, and being here with us. We really appreciate that. Don't forget also to share and like, because these things make a huge impact in what we are doing. Next week, we are back here, same time, same place. We are going to be interviewing a sculptor from France called Nefer Kane. She makes some amazing ball jointed dolls you don't want to miss. I have interviewed her uh, a few years ago. She's really amazing. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Thank you again.